In a previous video, we talked about thermal expansion. When you heat things up, atoms jiggle more and they move farther away from each other, causing the whole material to expand. But in this video, we're gonna try and answer questions like, how much copper expands on heating? Or how much aluminum expands on heating? So how do you give a number to how much something expands? Well, it turns out that there is one single quantity that can tell you how much something expands. And that quantity is called as linear expansion expansion coefficient coefficient and by the end of this video we'll familiarize ourselves with this scary looking term All right so let's start with an example imagine someone gives you a gold wire right so imagine here is our gold wire and let's say it has a length say it has a length L and it's sitting on on your desk at some temperature T now you decide to heat this thing up so you have a gold wire and you heat it up and when it heats up its temperature rises and the whole thing expands and you can see it expanding so as you heat it up we will see that the wire starts expanding like this Okay, let's put that thing over here. This is the expanded wire. And since the temperature has increased, now the new temperature, let's say, is T plus delta T. Delta T represents the change in temperature. How much the temperature increased? And now we'll compare the length of this wire to the previous length. Now this is how long the wire was initially. So this would be L. And due to the expansion, this is the extra length. So let's write that down. This would be L. This is L. And this, this region is that extra length delta L. And the big question now is what does delta L depend on? Let's think about this. We know that the wire expanded because we increased the temperature. So we could say that more you increase the temperature, more the wire will expand. In other words, we could say that more the value of delta T, more the value of delta L, right? Well, experiments support this. In fact, it turns out that for small values of delta L, for small values of delta L, it's even found that delta L is proportional to delta T. Proportional to delta T. And what I mean by this is that if you double the value of delta T, then delta L will also double. And you may be wondering, what do you mean by small values of delta L? How small is small? Well, as long as the expansion is much smaller than the original length. In other words, in other words, as long as delta L is much smaller than L, this will hold true. Not like what I've shown in this diagram. Over here, delta L is considerably large. I've exaggerated over here, in fact. But we will see in reality, delta L is very tiny compared to L itself. Okay? All right, anything else that delta L depends on? Hmm. Turns out, there's one more thing delta L will depend on. Delta L turns out to be also proportional to the original length. And you may be like, whoa, wait a second. Why would delta L depend on L? Well, if you think about this, it'll make sense. Imagine that we started out with a wire of not length L, but length 2L. Think about this. Imagine we had a wire gold of length 2L. And imagine again we heated it up and increased temperature by delta T. We could assume that this wire is made up of two wires, each of length L, right? We could do that. And since we know that each wire or each section of the wire is going to expand by delta L, we will see that this section will expand by delta L and this one will expand by delta L as well. And therefore, the total expansion, do you agree, would be 2 delta L. So if you double the length of the wire, the expansion doubles. And if you triple it, this would triple. So in other words, delta L, or the expansion in length, is proportional to the original length of the wire. So if we put these two together, we could now say delta L is proportional to L times delta T. And we could now replace this proportionality with an equal to sign by, by putting a constant over here. 
and that constant can be used any letter can be used for that over here we're going to use alpha l as the symbol for the constant times l delta t and this expression now is going to help us calculate how much something expands on heating and this constant alpha l is what we call as the linear expansion coefficient so let me just put a put a short form over here i won't write it again so linear expansion coefficient this is linear expansion coefficient all right now let's get to know alpha l a little bit better so let's put this thing a little bit aside okay the first thing we'll do is figure out the units of alpha l we can do that by dividing both sides by L delta T, so we'll isolate alpha L. So if you divide both sides by L delta T, the right hand side would be alpha L, which I'm writing over here, and the left hand side would be delta L divided by L delta T. Divided by L delta T. And from this, we can now figure out the units of this. Hmm, let's see. Delta L has the units of, well, it's length, so it's meters. L is also length. That's also meters. And delta T, temperature, well, the standard unit is Kelvin. So this cancels, which means we end up with 1 over Kelvin or Kelvin inverse. That's the unit of alpha L, the linear expansion coefficient. For example, for example, for gold, for gold, it turns out that alpha L values, I just looked it up, is equal to approximately 14 times 10 to the minus 6, minus 6 Kelvin inverse. And this might seem a little bit weird as to what do we even mean by 14 times 10 to the minus 6 Kelvin inverse? Well, what it means is if you took one meter long wire, one meter long gold wire, and if you increase this temperature by one Kelvin, then notice L becomes one, delta t becomes 1, which means delta L becomes equal to alpha L. And therefore, in our case, the expansion in the gold wire, this expansion, extra length, the expansion in the length, would be this number, 14 times 10 to the power minus 6 meters. This is meters because this is meters. So the alpha L, the linear expansion coefficient, tells us how much a one meter long wire when increased the temperature by one Kelvin would expand. That's what this number really is. And it doesn't have to be meters. This could have been one feet. If this was one feet, then this would be 14 times 10 to the power minus six feet. So whatever unit of length you take, same unit of delta L you end up with. So more the value of alpha L, more the material expands on heating or more sensitive the material is to changes in temperature. So now let's look at some values of alpha L of some typical materials. So here it is. We have alpha L values in terms of 10 to the power minus 6 Kelvin inverse. Gold is 14 times 10 to the power minus 6 Kelvin inverse. Now look at copper, it's 17, which means copper expands more on heating compared to gold. Aluminium expands even more. And look at glass. Its value is just 4 times 10 to the minus 6 Kelvin inverse, which means glass doesn't expand as much as these metals do. All right, I want to end this video with a simple numerical. Here it is. So we have a gold wire which has a length of 50 meters at 300 Kelvin. We have to calculate the change in its length when the temperature is increased to 400 Kelvin. Alpha L value is given. It's the same thing. It's gold. I want you to pause this video and first see if you can try to figure this out yourself. Try to do it intuitively. All right, time for solution. We know that alpha L, it's given to us, is 14 times 10 to the minus 6 Kelvin inverse. Which means if we have one meter long gold wire and increase the temperature by one Kelvin, then the expansion would be 14 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. But we have 50 meter long wire. Ooh, that means now if we had uh, increased the temperature by one Kelvin, the delta L would be 50 times this number. Does that make sense? For one meter, it would be so much. For 50 meters, it would be 50 times that much. So it would be 14 times 10 to the minus 6 Kelvin inverse multiplied by 50, 50 meters. But this would be the expansion in the length for one Kelvin rise. 
right? For one Kelvin, per Kelvin, it's one Kelvin rise. But how much Kelvin rise do we have? We're increasing the temperature from 300 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin. Well, how much is the change in the temperature here? Ooh, that's a hundred Kelvin rise. If this is the expansion for one Kelvin rise, for hundred Kelvin rise, well, we just multiply by hundred. So multiply by hundred Kelvin. And this is because delta L is proportional to delta T. Just we discussed that. And so now we just have to plug this in. Let's see how much we get. We get 14 times 50 times 100 is 5,000. 5,000 times 10 to the minus 6. And notice the Kelvin inverse and Kelvin cancels. And we end up with meters. Of course, because delta L should be in terms of meters, right? So if you multiply this, 5 fours are 20. 5 ones are 5. 70,000 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And that is equal to, let's just shift this a little bit. Okay, that's equal to 10 power minus 6. So let's shift decimals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which means we get about 0 0.07 meters. And that's how much the wire expands on heating in this example. And notice, we have just used the same expression that we derived over here. Notice delta L equals alpha L times L times delta T. So even without the expression, if you just if you just understand what alpha L really means, if you just understand this concept, then it's very easy to figure out or solve problems like this.